Senator Braun. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a complicated uh, discussion in the sense that there's so much variability uh, in terms of what the future does look like. Uh, it looks like the science is starting to zero in on some particularity in the actuarial business that you're in. Uh, it seems like it would be probably one of the hardest uh, topics to get uh, in some type of uh, way that you feel comfortable with what the future looks like. I think I'm a Republican that believes that we need to be in the discussion. Um, I mostly interface with farmers because uh, I've been involved in agriculture and they think something's afoot. Um, I think that uh, if it's as bad as me, it may be forecast to be, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it because that's where premiums and risk management are all going to have to come in, and I think you're at the forefront of how we finally crystallize, you know, what this discussion is about in general. So I'd like anyone that wants to weigh in on it. Have you actuarially gotten your hands around what this is going to look like, and should this be something that we're trying to prevent in terms of mitigation ahead of the calamity? Are you going to kind of just take each year of further information to do a better job at uh, kind of making sure that the financial risks are covered with fair premiums based upon the magnitude of the underlying risk? That sounds like a complicated formula to come up with. And like your honest opinion, if you think that uh, you'd be having huge risks that you couldn't really cover adequately, and that maybe some of the solution would be to mitigate ahead of the problem, since it especially looks like the world's maybe not buying in collectively to do the things that might even be prescriptive. Uh, when I look at the CO2 that's being put into the air by other parts of the world, there are only a few countries headed in a place where it might make sense if, in fact, the science looks like that's where we're actually headed. Um, it's kind of a sprawling question, but I, I think it hits the heart of the matter. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll bravely jump into the first part of that. Um, and and the, the one thing that, that stuck me that I wanted to add to your question is the timing is a real issue for us, for the insurance industry, in that these are decisions that get made and money that changes hands. So there is an immediacy to understanding the current risk that a risk taker is assuming. And so when people talk of climate change, they will talk of the effects of climate change today and what does the industry have to do and how do they better understand the impacts today on farms or businesses or, or consumers? And then what is the impact over 20, 30, 40 years, which gets harder to assess if you are in our seat. Well, in the short run, say, a short run where the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. are premiums covering uh, the amount of risk out there and being able to pay the claims in a sustainable way? So, so the short answer is no. Um, and how long has that been the case? I would say over the last four to five years, based on the losses that have come through the industry, the confidence of the capital providers that they have a full understanding of the risk that they're taking has been weakening over time. And so this year in particular was a pretty dramatic repricing of risk that happened in the reinsurance industry that is now coming through to the insurers and then ultimately to the consumers. Um, they don't trust the models. They don't quite understand what the impacts are going to be. And since these contracts happen today and they deal with issues of today, their focus is today and what are the impacts financially. But ultimately, they do recognize that they need a truer sense of risk and the changing nature of it in order to attract the capital that they need to provide. And are you spreading that risk over a broader segment than just the places that seem to have the highest claims? Absolutely. I mean, the whole nature of the business is to diversify it across various financial pools of capital over time as well. So not just location, but time. So everybody will pay the price, even for something that might be localized or regional. Yes. Anybody else want to weigh in? Senator Brown, uh, to the first part, 
about the difficulties in uh, pinpointing what will be the amount of the, of the losses and, and when, it is difficult indeed because actuarial science is mainly backward looking. Now we're talking about a moving target because the exposure level is changing. And uh, yes, there are models, as uh, Mr. Anderson mentioned, uh, but it said that uh, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So we know that directionally it is getting worse, but we do have to do something. And uh, to your point on uh, mitigation uh, and resilience, that's uh, really where the industry is going, because once you do have better behavior, you don't have building on the coasts and the floodplains, that will send a signal, a price signal, uh, when there are losses and the rates go up for people not to build in ways that exacerbate the risk. So the, uh, you have the positive incentive for, from price signals. Mr. Chairman, can I have one more brief question? Uh, so in the extrapolation of what has been extra normal, it sounds like, over the last four to five years, and compared to the past when you just have weather incidents that were more sporadic, is the insurance industry now extrapolating based upon a new model and it's based on what has been had some consistency over at least the last four or five years, or are you still waiting to do that to where you'd fully price the risk into your premiums? The models are recalibrated on a, on a regular basis, so the industry is not sitting on outdated models that don't take into account what's happening in California and in uh, uh, other parts of the country. So they're, they're trying to keep up, but it's like hitting a moving target because the, the, uh, the denominator is changing. And in the area of the highest claims, will this be priced into those localities in a way that that would cause the mitigation of maybe not living where uh, whatever the climate impact is that's having the greatest effect? It is because you have uh, many of the national insurance companies have separate companies that are focused on a particular state. Okay. So, so Florida, for example, which is problematic not so much because of catastrophes, but because of uh, litigation, which has gone out of, out of control with 86% uh, of the nation's homeowners insurance litigation, uh, although Florida only has about 7% of the, of the nation's homes. So that's, that's a separate issue there. I was just going to very briefly add that I, I think, and thank you for the question, I, I think one of the, the nuances here is that insurance policies are written on an annual basis. We have mortgages that are written on a 30-year basis, and we have homeownership decisions which are written maybe on a lifetime basis or even you know longer, passing on a, a home in a generational way. And so you know, we see the insurance markets responding very rapidly because they're repricing. You're uh, the true variable cost in the equation. Exactly. And so they're going to be the ones who are most flexible in, in a lot of ways. And, and, and that means that we, the, these other markets should be taking a lot of signals uh, from what the insurance markets are doing. Ms. Watkins, did you have? You had asked about modeling. And uh, the insurance industry uh, is definitely recalibrating their uh, models, as Mr. Theodore said. Um, they are also uh, building a, a track forward into the future, looking at different climate scenarios. And so they are, are, are becoming able to predict this out in the future, but that hasn't historically been a focus. Um, these models are also being used by long-term investors. Um, and, you know, Fannie Mae just had an article where they're, they're looking at these models as well. But to your main point, mitigating ahead of the calamity, I think that that was my focus, is finding the money and aligning the, the stars to start reducing the risk, which isn't traditionally some the, 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 in the purview of others. Thank you. I, I think your industry is going to be on that leading edge of what actually takes an amorphous conversation into something uh, with a few particularities that uh, we can look to to guide us in the future. Thank you. We'd like to be. Thank you, Senator Braun.